Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Centurions. And this week, we will be featuring something that is tall, not straight, an architectural wonder, or a marvel if you like. And of course, it is man-made and has been in existence for over 100 years. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Torre Pendete de Pisa, or simply put, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, or the Freestanding Bell Tower of Pisa Cathedral, it is known for its nearly 4 degree lean, the result of an unstable foundation. The tower is one of three structures in the Pisa's Cathedral Square, also known as the Piazza del Duomo, which includes the Cathedral and Pisa Baptistry. The height of the tower is 55.86 meters, which is 183 feet 3 inches from the ground on the low side. The height of the tower is 55.86 meters, that's 183 feet 3 inches from the ground on the low side, and it's 56.67 meters, which is 185 feet 11 inches on the high side. The width of the walls at the base is 2.44 meters, which is 8 feet and no inches added. Its weight is estimated at 14,500 tons. The tower has 296, or if you may, 294 steps, because the 7th floor has 2 fewer steps on the north side facing staircase. The tower began to lean during construction in the 12th century due to soft ground which could not properly support the structure's weight. It worsened through the completion of construction in the 14th century. And by 1990, the tilt had reached 5.5 degrees. The structure was stabilized by remedial work between 1993 and 2001, which reduced the tilt to 3.97 degrees. There has been so much controversy surrounding the identity of the architect of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. For many years, the design was attributed to Guglielmo and Bonanno Pisano, a well-known 12th century resident artist of Pisa, known for his bronze casting, particularly in the Pisa Duomo. Pisano left Pisa in 1185 for Monreal, Sicily, only to come back and die in his hometown. A piece of cast bearing his name was discovered at the foot of the tower in 1820, but this may be related to the bronze door and the facade of the cathedral that was destroyed in 1595. A 2001 study seems to indicate Diotti Salvi was the original architect due to the time of construction and affinity with other Diotsalvi works, notably the bell tower of San Nicola and the baptistry, which both are in Pisa. Construction of the tower occurred in three stages over 199 years. On the 5th of January 1172, Donna Berta de Bernardo, a widow and resident of the House of Del Opera in Santa Maria, bequeathed 60 soldi. Soldi, ladies and gentlemen, was the currency of the day back then in medieval Milan, Italy. She gave the money to the opera. The sum was then used towards the purchase of a few stones, which still form the base of the bell tower to this day. On the 9th of August, 1173, the foundations of the tower were laid. Work on the ground floor of the white marble campanile began on the 14th of August of the same year during a period of military success 
and prosperity. This ground floor is a blind arcade articulated by engaged columns with classical Corinthian capitals. Those are pillars used in grand architectural buildings in that era. Nearly four centuries later, Giorgio Vasari wrote Guglielmo according to what is being said in the year 1174 together with sculptor Bonanno laid the foundations of the bell tower of the cathedral in Pisa, also known as the Leaning Tower. The tower began to sink after construction had progressed to the second floor in 1178. This was due to a mere three-meter foundation set in weak, unstable subsoil, a design error from the very beginning. Construction was subsequently halted for almost a century as the Republic of Pisa was almost continually engaged in battles with Genoa, Lucca, and Florence. This allowed time for the underlying soil to settle. Otherwise, the tower would almost surely not exist today. On the 27th of December 1233, the worker, Benenato, son of Gerardo Botticci, oversaw the continuation of the tower's construction. On the 23rd of February 1260, Guido Speziale, son of Giovanni Pisano, was elected to oversee the building of the tower. On the 12th of April 1264, the master builder Giovanni de Simone, architect of the Campo Santo and 23 workers went to the mountains close to Pisa to cut marble. The cut stones were given to Rinaldo Speziale and in 1272, construction resumed under De Simone. In an effort to compensate for the tilt, the engineers built upper floors with one side taller than the other. Because of this, the tower is curved. Construction was halted again in 1284 when the Pisans were defeated by the Genoese in the Battle of Meloria. The seventh floor was completed in 1319. The bell chamber was finally added in 1372. It was built by Tommaso di Andrea Pisano who succeeded in harmonizing the Gothic elements of the belfry with the Romanesque style of the tower. There are seven bells, one for each note of the musical scale. The largest one was installed in 1655. Between 1589 and 1592, Galileo Galilei, who lived in Pisa at the time, is said to have dropped two cannonballs of different masses from the tower to demonstrate that their speed of descent was independent of their mass, in keeping with the law of free fall. During the Second World War, the Allies suspected that the Germans were using the tower as an observation post. Leon Wexstein a U.S. Army sergeant sent to confirm the presence of German troops in the tower was impressed by the beauty of the cathedral and its campanile and thus refrained from ordering an artillery strike, sparing it from destruction. I guess it's safe to say that Sergeant Leon Wickstein helped to preserve a unique edifice and a piece of history. Numerous efforts have been made to restore the tower to a vertical orientation or at least keep it from falling over. Most of these efforts failed, some worsened the tilt. On the 27th of February 1964, the government of Italy requested aid in preventing the tower 
from toppling over. It was however considered important to retain the current tilt due to the role that this element played in promoting the tourism industry of Pisa. Starting in 1993, 870 tons of lead counterweights were added which straightened the tower slightly. The tower and the neighboring cathedral, baptistry and cemetery are included in the Piazza del Duomo UNESCO World Heritage Site which was declared in 1987. The tower was closed to the public on the 7th of January 1990 after more than two decades of stabilization studies and spurred by the abrupt collapse of the civic tower of Pavia in 1989. The bells were removed to relieve some weight and cables were cinched around the third level and anchored several hundred meters away. Apartments and houses in the path of a potential fall of the tower were vacated for safety. The selected method for preventing the collapse of the tower was to slightly reduce its tilt to a safer angle by removing 83 cubic meters, which is 1,342 cubic feet of soil from underneath the raised end. The tower's tilt was reduced by 45 centimeters, returning it to its 1,838 position. After a decade of corrective reconstruction and stabilization efforts, the tower was reopened to the public on the 15th of January 2001 and was declared stable for at least another 300 years. In total, 70 metric tons of soil were removed after a phase that lasted between 1990 to 2001 of structural strengthening the tower has been undergoing gradual surface restoration to repair visible damage, mostly corrosion and blackening. These are particularly pronounced due to the tower's age and its exposure to wind and rain. In May of 2008, engineers announced that the tower had been stabilized such that it had stopped moving for the first time in its history. They stated that it would be stable for at least 200 years. That's all we have for you on this episode of Centurions as we feature the Tower of Pisa, also known as the Leaning Tower. Do subscribe, like and share so we'll come your way again. I'm Dimitri and I'm saying thanks for watching.